everyone. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? It feels so good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I am so excited to be here with all of you in the presence of the Lord. There's nothing quite like coming together with God's people. I, uh, I remember when I was growing up listening to pastors and preachers or people that were in the pulpit talk about how there's nothing that compares to being in, in God's presence with people of like faith. And I don't know if you're like me or not, but there are times when I hear those things and I think, ah, it's just lip service. Somebody's trying to get me hyped up behind the pulpit. And I'm not suggesting everyone is pure of heart when they say those kinds of things. But one of the things, Brother Kelly, that I have learned over the last several years is that that statement couldn't be any truer, that there is nothing quite like being in the presence of the Lord with people of like faith. Last night, the, the men's group, what a fantastic atmosphere and presence and word that we had last night. So very excited about the direction of our men's group. Um, but one of the things that, that uh, I was most pleased with and most proud of last night was with that small group of men that were here was just an outpouring, a great outpouring of the Spirit of God. And that was because every one of those men came to the service with the intention of lifting God up, praising God with a praise on their heart. And it, it just moved. It just moved. One of the things that I testified to the men about, or maybe I was saying, saying it during prayer or praise time. Now I don't remember. But it's the truth. Sister Sue, there are sometimes as pastor, I come in and, and I, I, I'm tired. I've had a bad week. You know, I've had things that have gone on that, you know, have thrown me off a little bit. Pastor David, I know he can attest to that too. Pastor Chris, I know he can attest to that, as can anyone that is here tonight. There are times that I come out of my office and my heart's heavy. I've just gotten some news or, you know, we're we're dealing with all kinds of, there's all kinds of things on my mind. Believe it or not, every once in a while, pastors get discouraged. Amen. (laughs) But I I testified to them last night that there are moments, those moments that I come out and in the presence of the Lord with people of like faith. Sister Cheryl, I look out and I see you doing that little step back and forth as you get excited singing with all of your heart. I see Sister Donna or Brother Denny with their hands raised praising the Lord. And in an instant... In an instant, all of those things that have so easily beset me just go away. There's nothing like being in the presence of God with people of like faith. You encourage me tonight, and I, I, I feel the presence of the Lord. I think it would be appropriate. if uh, You don't have to stand if you don't want to, but you're welcome if you'd like to. I wonder if we could just open this service with a simple praise. I promise I won't egg you on, and we don't have to do this for 15 minutes, but just for the next 10 or 15 seconds. Could we open this service together with praise and see if we can't change the atmospheres for somebody today? Lord, we love you and praise you. God, we are so thankful for all of your mercy and your grace. God, you have been so good to us. You are truly magnificent and wonderful and power, powerful and glorious. And we are so thankful that we've had the opportunity that we've had to know you. God, we praise you in this place together in one mind, in one accord. As one body, we lift you up. Blessed be your wonderful, your holy and powerful name. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I know it's not my time to preach, but I I feel in my spirit there's something about it. The Bible, it's so simple. We talk about it all the time. The Bible says we're, 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 we're gathered together in his name. If we will praise him, if we will lift him up, the Bible says he will be in the middle of us. And we take that for granted sometimes, I think. But isn't it true? Isn't it true? And aren't you thankful that God is true to his word? Could we clap our hands to the Lord one more time? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord.
Hallelujah. Since you're already standing with me, we're, I want to make a couple of announcements, but we're going to go straight into prayer as is customary on Wednesday nights for us to pray. A couple of announcements. First is ministers in training this Saturday. The, if, if you're part of that second class, uh, that's from 8.30 a.m. till 10.30 a.m. The second class starts promptly at 10.30, from 10.30 to 12.30. If you have a desire uh, to be part of ministers in training, we're asking you to come out. You do not have to be a preacher. You do not have to be a man. If you have interest in learning more about ministry and where you fall in that, come and be with us 8.30. If you've not been a part, be here at 8.30 on Saturday. Please come to see me after service or let me know. Shoot me a text and let me know that you'll be here so I can be prepared for that as well. Sunday service, January the 24th. Aren't you excited about what God has been doing? Amen. We, we were talking about this, I, I think, last night in our men's meeting about uh, our Facebook. And, and good evening to all of our friends, family, and followers on Facebook, uh, our social media platforms. You never know who we're reaching. You never know who we're touching. Uh, but we have been receiving testimonies and reports from people all over the United States who have been tuning into our services whose lives have been forever changed by the presence of the Lord through our services, and we are so thankful. So I'm encouraging you to invite somebody. If they can't be here in person, invite them to be here virtually. We believe, we know for a fact that God's moving across the airwaves and He's healing people and delivering people and setting them free, so don't be afraid to invite them to be here. January 30th, Pancakes and Prayers, the Holy Ghost Fire Grill is reopening pancakes, eggs, bacon. Somebody asked me the other night, it was important if we were going to have chocolate milk, we're going to have chocolate milk. <laughs> uh, but we are so excited about that, making a comeback. Holy Ghost Fire Grill reopening 1030 a.m. to 1 p.m. Also, everyone is invited. Bring your family with you. Invite somebody. We want to serve as many people as possible. I promise you we will have enough food for everyone. And the last thing I wanted to announce tonight, and this is very important, I've had a number of people who have made mention of just wanting to understand some more things about the Bible. Not necessarily an in-depth Bible study, but to understand some things about the Bible. Uh, so uh, starting in February, beginning in February, uh, we are going to start a, a church-wide home Bible study for anybody who wants to be a part of that. If you want to learn more about uh, just the Bible, how to study the Bible, how to look at the Bible, uh, understand different component, components of the Bible, uh, we're going to start that in February. It'll be on a different night than our Wednesday night Bible study. This will be an addition to that. Uh, but I know there's a number of people that have just been curious about what does this actually mean? Why are the books in this type of uh, order and all of that? And this will help uh, give you a better understanding of that. If you've been around a long time, some of us need to revisit some of that. And you're more than welcome to participate in that as well. But we'll keep you posted on when that exact date is. Uh, but we're excited about that. Uh, we have several prayer requests tonight. I'm going to go through them rather quickly. If you don't remember them all, that's okay. I promise I will call every single name out. Uh, but I am asking you specifically to grab a hold of one of the names, okay? Retain that so that, uh, that we agree on that and, and can pray together for that need. We want to remember Mickey tonight. She's got a very special need uh, that we want to lift up with her tonight in faith, believing that God will... Do what needs to be done. Amen. We're going to agree with you tonight. We need to continue to remember Al, Vicki, Sarah, and also David Rainey, all battling with cancer. We pray that God would intervene in that situation. Amen. Uh, Jason Busy had a conversation with him actually over the last two days, and uh, he's, he's had all kinds of tests done, uh, just curious about what's going on in his body. And uh, he messaged me just before service tonight and said, please, please ask the church to pray. We want to be in church on Sunday, and uh, we, we want to and we need to be there. Would you ask the church to pray? And I said, absolutely. We need to remember Asa Newell. Uh, many of you may know the Newell family. They've been around Jefferson County, Mount Vernon area for quite some time. Very good friends have been with Jason, his dad. Uh, this is a young man dealing with uh, cancer in his body. I think he's on the road to recovery. Uh, and we're celebrating that, but they want to make sure that this is just gone. And as a, he's, I think he's still in high school, actually. And 
and uh, we want to pray that God would just just touch him in a powerful way and just eradicate his body. Amen. Continue to pray for John Gieselman. We're asking that you would continue to lift him up in prayer. Uh, and also Susan, uh, I'm happy to report that she is home uh, and has, is doing very, very well. She's very appreciative of all of your prayers and your thoughts. Thank you so very much for those of you that have reached out to her. And also if you feel like, or if you've been wondering, can I send her a message on Facebook or text message or something? She would love that. Feel free uh, to reach out to her. She's doing very, very well, but we want to continue to pray for her. Also, Carol Strange uh, battling with the effects of COVID. Uh, Ginger Neville, we, this is Brother Chris's aunt. Uh, he testified about her last night, the fact that, you know, he didn't realize that she was watching our services. She's been watching our services and have been very appreciative of our prayers. Let's lift her up tonight. Dixie Crutzinger, that's a name we've been praying for for quite some time. She's still struggling, still fighting the fight. And we want to pray that God continues to give her the strength and pull her out of this. Brandy, what an incredible move that God has done in her life. Uh, Brother Denny shared with, with some of us last night something uh, that he's seen out of her recently and just just an incredible testimony of the work God is doing not only in her body but in her heart, mind, and spirit. So let's continue to remember her. Remember her. Uh, I believe it's pronounced Isla. Uh, this is a, a, a child, a baby that has some heart issues and we want to pray God would reach down and touch this, this young child and, and heal her body in Jesus' name. Uh, many of you may know that David Pulley has been battling with COVID over the last couple of weeks and uh, I know that he covets our prayers we want to lift David up tonight he and his family pray that his family if they if they have encountered it if they've uh, if they have uh, uh, contracted that the COVID uh, virus as well let's pray that God would touch them and keep them I want to continue to remember Ron Houseworth and uh, just pray that God would continue to do a great and mighty work now he didn't ask me to do this tonight but I also want us to remember Pastor David been struggling with a lot of things in his body and and uh, he testified to the men last night that he is claiming healing in Jesus name amen and uh, we're believing before the doctors can get all this stuff squared away and figured out that God just heals him amen Amen. I wonder, is there anyone in this building who has an unspoken request that would raise their hand all over this building? Would you turn and raise them up real high? Turn and find somebody. You don't have to know their name. Just remember the color of their shirt. And we'll lift them up in prayer. Facebook, if you have an unspoken, lift your hand real high tonight. God sees you. The last thing I would ask you to do is open your mouth. There's something about the spoken word. Don't just rely on Pastor Michael to pray this prayer. Open your mouth and speak. Use that outdoor voice, and let's pray with power and fervency tonight that God will do a great work. Can we do that together right now? Lord, we love you. God, we are so thankful for your spirit that we feel in this place tonight. God, we are so we're comforted by the fact that your presence, your presence is where we praise you. We're, we're comforted by the fact that when we call on you, you are there. And Lord, because we can feel you tonight, we're encouraged. Because we can feel you moving amongst us tonight, we're encouraged. And Lord, we're, we're, we're coming boldly before your throne with needs and requests. Things, Lord, that are greater than we are. God, I pray that you touch Mickey tonight. Lord, you see her situation. You understand where her heart is, where her mind is, where her spirit is. Lord, you understand everything that's coming against her. God, we know that if God is for us, there is nothing that can stand against us. So, Lord, right now we speak peace into this situation. And we pray that your power would be invoked and that everything would work out the way that it needs to work out. I pray in your name for comfort and peace in her mind. I pray for joy unspeakable and full of glory in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus God, right now, impart it right now in the name of the Lord. Lord, we lift up Al, Vicki, Sarah, and David Rainey, all four of these battling with cancer, all of them battling as hard as they can. Lord, we're thankful for the good reports that we've heard from Al and from Vicki. We know and they know, they've testified to it, 
that, that it's only by the grace of God that they are seeing what they're seeing. God, we pray that you finish the work. Lord, we pray that you would intervene for Sarah and for David Rainey as we lift them up to you tonight. God, they don't have to understand it. We, we've, we've settled that before. They don't have to understand it. But God, I pray right now in your name that your healing virtue would be, would, it would be imparted, that it would, that it would flow out right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up Asa Newell, this young man battling with cancer. Lord, I pray in your name. I pray, Lord, from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, let him feel the fire and the unction of your spirit as it cleanses his young body. In the name of Jesus, touch his mind. Give him confidence in you. Touch his parents. I pray that you'd bless their finances. I pray every aspect that's been affected by this affliction would be blessed by your spirit in your name. Lord, we lift up Jason busy tonight, battling things in his body, in his heart, in his mind. I pray. I pray for Jason and Ashley. I pray for Miley and Micah. God, in your name right now, shower down upon that family. Lord, in your name, in the middle of their darkness, I pray that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out, pour out your spirit. Let it rain down upon them. Flood their hearts and their lives and their home. With the power of the Holy Ghost, let there be a revival in their home right now tonight as we lift them up in prayer. Would somebody agree with me? Let there be a Holy Ghost fire that is unleashed in their home. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. God, we lift up brandy. We ask, Lord, that you would continue the work that you've already started. Thank you for the testimony of her life. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing and, and everything that's unfolding for her. God, we pray in your name that you would continue to work. God, that you would continue to lead, that you would continue to bless in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up Isla, this child, this baby tonight, dealing with heart issues. She's not even old enough to understand what's happening inside of her body. She's trusting completely in, in, in medical staff and her parents and, and those around her that are trying to take care of her. But God, we know that you created this body. You understand it better than any physician, better than any surgeon. Lord, you understand this body in and out. I pray in your name right now. Lord, let your healing virtue flow from the top of this child's head to the sole of her feet. And I pray in your name, everything that is wrong, let it be mended, let it be made right. Make it new and make it perfect all for your glory and for your honor in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm thankful for what you've done in Susan's body. And I'm thankful for what you've done in Susan's life. It is an, it is an incredible, unmistakable miracle what you have done. You are great and greatly to to be praised and we magnify you for it tonight we give you glory and honor and praise we thank you but lord we come against uncertain we uncertainty and we come against doubt and we come against fear and and the things that the enemy of our soul would try to ingrain in us that would they would try to pour into us i come against all of those right now and i pray lord would you help me right now church would you help me build a hedge of protection around her right now? Lord, in your name, we pray right now for a hedge of protection against the wiles of the enemy. Let her stay encouraged. Let her stay full of faith in the name of Jesus. And touch John. Let it bleed over into his life and to his body. We pray the miracle that started in Susan. God, don't let it stop there. Let it move on into their home, touching John in his, in his body, in his spirit, in his mind. In Jesus name we pray for Carol Strains battling with the lasting effects of the COVID virus. Lord strengthen this man I pray. In the name of the Lord give him a will. Give him a will to live. Give him a will to stand up and fight and, and in Jesus name I pray heal and touch his body. Touch Ginger Neville. Touch Dixie Crutzinger. In the name of Jesus touch David Pulley. God I pray in your name right now that you would pour out your spirit. Pour out the healing virtue, Lord. All of these need you. God, we lift up Ron Houseworth to you tonight and ask God that you would meet him where he is. Lord, in your name we pray. God, I pray, Lord, not just for a physical blessing, not just, just for a physical transaction, but God, I pray more importantly for a spiritual transaction. 
Lord, in your name, I pray right now that you come against the loneliness, the hurt. Lord, in your name, I pray right now that you wrap your arms around him and remind him that he is important in your kingdom and that you're still on his side. You're still his biggest cheerleader. That you're there when nobody else is there and that you care and love deeper than any of the rest of us can. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Lord, all across this building, represented by the uplifted hand, and all across this broadcast, people in their homes, in their vehicles, Lord, raising their hands and faith believing, knowing, Lord, that their situation, their circumstance is greater than they are. But, Lord, in that simple act of faith, raising their hands, they in that moment identified you as the God who can step in to any situation. It might be bigger than we are. It might be greater than we are, but it is never greater than you and Lord by that simple act of faith of raising the hand I pray you would honor it in Jesus name we know faith is heaven's currency we know Lord when we extend that to you Lord you are required by your word to respond so Lord I pray right now in your name for every hand that was lifted God every hand that was lifted for deliverance let deliverance be found every hand that was lifted because they're fighting something internally God I pray right now that they would find healing every hand that was lifted because they needed healing in their body. God, in your name, let it flow. Lord, those that raise their hand for salvation or for lost loved ones or financial needs, whatever it is, God, we pray. In your name, in faith believing, would you shout that name, Jesus? Come on, would you shout that name, Jesus? In Jesus' name, release your power. In Jesus' name, release your joy. In Jesus' name, let mercy be found. Let grace be felt in the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, as Pastor David comes tonight, I wonder, would you just lift your heart, your hands, your voice to God, for he is worthy to be praised. Yes. Come on, somebody praise Thank the Lord, you, Lord together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Thank hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So thankful for each and every one of you that's here tonight. For those that are viewing online, we just believe Jesus is doing something. And we really believe we're not better than any other local assembly, but we believe that Jesus is willing to take us to a level where many of us may have never been. This isn't condescending to no one, but I want him to take us where he wants to take us. Amen. Amen. And I want to be willing to go where he wants me to go. Amen. Amen. Uh, You may be seated. Sunday morning started out with a breakdown of my vehicle when I was out of state, and so Sue and I didn't get to listen to the service till we were on the way home late Sunday evening. But boy, were we refreshed by the service. I am the door. Yeah. Amen. Last night, Brother Chris uh, just added fuel to us men and excited us men. Amen. About what God is wanting to do with all of us. Not, say not some of us. Not some of us but all of us. And that includes the ladies too. Amen. The title of my message is tonight is If She Can Do It, So Can We. Can you say that? So can we. Revelation chapter 12, (coughs) beginning at verse 7 through 11. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And prevail not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. Can we say that? Now is come salvation. (laughs) And strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. 
which accused them before our God day and night. Yeah. Amen. Verse 11, and they overcame. Say overcame. In the Greek, that word doesn't mean endured. It doesn't mean they hung on by their chinny chin chin. <laughs> Many years ago, there was a slogan that became popular. When you come to the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. That isn't this word they overcame. This is about being victorious. Can, you, can we say together, in Jesus we are victorious. In Jesus, we are victorious. Amen. I'm so glad he's not a respecter of person, respecter of intellect, respecter of ability, but he loves us all. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And they overcame him first by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, yes. and they love not their lives yes. unto the death. I want to talk first point about the blood. After thousands of years, it being about the blood of bulls and goats yes. and animals that were sacrificed. That didn't do away with sin. Most teach they only rolled the sins ahead, waiting for the day when the blood of the perfect lamb right. would be slain. Amen. This is not just the blood of animals, but this is the atoning blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes. When the cycle of humanity was totally reversed, the king don't die for the pauper yes. in our human society. But the king of kings and the Lord of lords yes. loved each and every one of us. Yes. Amen. You know, most of us didn't experience in our life, unconditional love. Certain, sometimes family members had more expected of me than I was able to perform. But he loved me unconditionally. And he didn't care about my past. He cared about new direction for my future. Amen? The atoning blood of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. A couple of songs. You can say praise the Lord because I won't sing them to you tonight. <laughs> what can wash away my sins? No. What? No. What can make me whole again? <laughs> For my pardon this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, this my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, amen. 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 Another song that I love deeply. Friend, don't worry about this heavy load I carry. Don't be concerned if it sends me to my knees. Yes. For I know a place where all my load will lighten. I'll be all right as soon as I reach Calvary. Very soon now I'll reach the hill of Golgotha. I'll touch the cross that was fashioned from a tree. And if one precious drop of his blood touches me, I'll be all right as soon as I reach Calvary. Amen. Amen. Thinking about the Lord Jesus. In the garden, the Bible says he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. Some have taught, I've heard teachings that capillaries burst, and out of his sweat glands poured blood. But in the garden was where the victory was won. When he said, Father, (laughs) not my will, but thine be done. And he's wanting us as men and women to repeat after him. Father, not my will, but thine be done. We can't finish the life, the ministry, and these things that he's called us to until we surrender to his will. Amen? Amen. Amen. Secondly, the stripes on his back, the pain, 
was the shedding again of blood. In the embarrassment and humiliation, they placed the crown of thorns on his head. And the blood trickled down, possibly, on his face. When they nailed his hands and his feet, <laughs> his precious blood was shed for you and I. But that didn't end there. When the soldiers went out to usually end the suffering and break the legs of those that were crucified, he had already died. And a soldier reached up and pierced his side with a spear. None of his bones were broken. But out of his side flowed blood and water. <laughs> That became real on the day of Pentecost. Yes, Peter said, repent. And it's, repentance is all about the old altar of sacrifice in the Old Testament and the shedding of blood. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Oh, first thing every morning, I was convicted when the Lord began to reveal this to me. I have... People on my heart, on my mind, and I try to pray for when I first wake up. Sometimes my prayer is interrupted by phone calls, let me be honest with you. But I want to now, every day that I pray, I want to sincerely thank him for the blood that he shed on yeah. Calvary. Yeah. I want to thank him for willing to suffer and die in every form of humiliation and every form of torment for every one of us. <laughs> Can we just right now, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you for your precious blood, Lord, that you shed on Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, that you suffered and you endured the pain and the embarrassment and the humiliation and the agony and willingly shed your blood that we might have life and that we might have it all more abundantly. We love you, Jesus. We praise you tonight. And all that dwell upon the earth, Revelation 13 and 8, shall worship him. Talking about old Satan and all whose name are not written in the Lamb, in the life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Yeah. Jesus has no surprises. Right. There are no surprises. He knows the beginning from the end. Hallelujah. Slain from the foundation of the world. He knew what he must do. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Yes. The Lord of glory paid this price yes. that this could happen for you or I. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. What can make me white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. I changed the order. I want to go to the next point. I want to talk to you after point one of the blood. I want to talk to you about life. So allow me that freedom to just change the order. It's not blasphemous, but I have another point, okay? Amen. Mark eight thirty four through 36. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Wow. Amen? Yes. Take up his cross and follow me. I must confess to this group of people tonight. My life was in such turmoil and such chaos at the time. I was wounded. I was hurting. I was desperate. Yeah. There wasn't a whole lot of surrender then, Brother Denny, but I just fell in his grace and his mercy. Yeah. But now he's calling me to, to deny myself more than he ever has. Yes. Amen? Amen? Will you pray that I do that and that I take up his cross? Right. I've carried a lot of crosses in life, but most of them were self-inflicted. Right. Have you created your own cross once in a while to carry? Right. Hmm? Yes. And follow him. Amen. For whosoever, here's the point, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. Yes, amen. amen. That's the difference between human life and eternal life in Jesus Christ. Yes. Verse 36, for what shall it profit a man if he should, shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Yes. 1 Corinthians 15, 31, Paul writing, do I need to hear it? Yes. He said, I 
protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ, Jesus our Lord, I die daily. Yes. Have we realized? Have we realized? His joy, his presence so often is so overwhelming. Yes. I sometimes fail to realize that there's things in me that still need to die. Sure. Amen. God, make those things aware to me yes. in my life. Amen. Jesus, help me. Romans 8, 12, and 13. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I'm thankful. I'm thankful that in my relationship with Jesus... Every time he makes me aware of a shortcoming or a failure or sin in my life, yeah. there's grace there that says, yes. if I'll turn to you, yes. I'll help you do a lot better, David. Yeah. Amen. Hmm? No condemnation. No criticizing. Right. No statements like most of us heard in our life. Well, how many times have you done that before? <laughs> But just simply say, I can help you do better yes. if you just allow me to. Amen? Amen? Colossians 3, 4, and 6. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affections, evil concupiscence. <laughs> And covetous, which is idolatry. You can see that I wasn't an English major in school. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In our point three of the misarrangement of that previous verse, I want to talk now about our testimony. Would you say our testimony? Our testimony. The Apostle Paul give this long one. I want to read it to you. Acts chapter 26, beginning at verse 13. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all, all, and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? Here's the revelation. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Yes. He thought he knew and was associated with the Lord God, Jehovah. But he got revelation. Yeah. Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Verse 16, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. To make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. Yes. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, and to whom now I send thee. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Amen. Amen. Not by the clothes we wear, right. <laughs> right. but by the faith in him. Hallelujah. Yes, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly calling. Dropping on down to verse 24. And, uh, and as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. power of the witness the power of the witness sometimes some way somehow we may only get one real opportunity to witness to people yeah, that's right. That's right. and we need to capitalize on it yes. some of the things that I suggest that we not do I suggest that we not tell them what we think yes. <laughs> yeah. don't tell them what we believe it isn't important it's Im important in that initial time, to speak the truth to them in love. Yes. 
if men, uh, the Bible tells us that before they appear before the synagogues, don't make any notes, don't make any preparation, just let the Spirit speak to you. If there ever is a time in dealing with people that are not in the church, it's time to let the Spirit speak through us. Yes. Amen? Amen? And boy, can the simple things in the Spirit confound the wise. Right. Amen? Amen. <laughs> to the theme and the thought of my, my <laughs> message tonight, if she can do it, so can we. I want to talk to you in the concluding part about the woman at the well. Don't let familiarity with these scriptures breed contempt. All right. But let the word of God speak to you. Yes, amen. amen. Beginning of chapter, uh, John chapter 4, beginning of verse 7. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it thou, that, that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Racial injustice has always been around. But I want to tell you something. There is the justifier, and his name is Jesus. Amen. And he's no respecter of person. It doesn't matter our educational level. It doesn't matter our race, creed, or color. He died for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we want to love all those people. If he loved them enough to die for them, we are indebted to love them as he loved them. Amen. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Wow. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. She was still in the natural realm. Jacob's well approximately 90 feet this man didn't have a bucket or a rope. Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank there of himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Talking about the well water. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him yes. shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Yes, that well of water that's to be a spring in us not only will help us to reach that life eternal, right. but you'll be able to water other lives as you go through life. Can you say amen? amen. There's a couple of types of wells. There's the spring. And it's ever flowing. And one time I had a cistern. And you want to be careful about the cisterns you drink out of. Because right. some can bring death. And I pray to God that every one of us become that well of living water. Because yes. we're in a thirsty and a barren and a dry land in America. There's a lot of people that need to drink of the living water. Right. And out of us, just let some flow. There's always enough. You c the more you give away, guess what's going to happen? What's going to happen? More is going to get given to you. Right. Amen. You can't outgive God. Can you say amen? amen? The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water. Can we say tonight, Jesus, give us this water. Jesus, <laughs> give, us water. Jesus give us this living water. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Jesus saith unto her, When we sincerely ask of God, Here's what he begins to do. He begins to bring truth into her life. Amen? Amen. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husbands and come hither. The woman answered, When we get thirsty for the drink, <laughs> when we want Jesus more than we want anything else, we won't have a problem dealing with truth. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Is it okay if I get a little bit excited tonight? I listen to Michael and Chris, and I get excited, and wow. Oh, how do these simple scriptures are profound 
the wisdom of the eternal life. Amen? Amen. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. In other words, you spoke truth. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. This woman coming to this well at the time of the day was an outcast of society. Listen, there are no outcasts of society in his kingdom. That's right. Whosoever will, yes. Yes. Hmm, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Yes. <laughs> you, you don't require money. It's available. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, her eyes begin to, oh, I perceive that thou art a prophet. She means of God. Then hear the traditions of man. See the old enemy is always there in the conversation to distract it, to get it off course. Well, where do we worship, see? Our father, she said, worshiped in this mountain, and ye you, and you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, now is. Yes. Hmm. For this city, for this community, for our families, I believe in the hour, now is. Yes. Hmm. When true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Yes. He seeketh. We can come before His presence, can yes. we? Boldly, not arrogantly. Bold, just boldly with confidence. Yes. He wants us to come. Yes. It don't matter what we've done. Let's quit beating ourselves up. Let us allow ourselves to be human and look to the source of eternal life. It's not just in what we do, but it's all in Him. Praise God. All right. Oh, for the Father seeketh such a worship Him. God is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Huh? Not in church attendance, as important as it is. I've read the Bible wrong times in my life. I wanted to read the Bible to bring accusation against a brother or a sister. <laughs> I read the Bible to make the Bible confirm to what I believe rather than asking the Bible to, to shape me and mold me into what you want me to be. Arguing the word don't help a bit. Speaking the word in truth and in love. Yes. Is what our families, our friends, and all that we needed. Yes. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. That's verse 25. When he has come, he will tell us all things. <laughs> Amen? Yes. Is he talking to us? Sure he is. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon, this, and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he had talked with this woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or what talkest thou with her? Yeah. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men. <laughs> Here's the woman, the outcast. Come see a man which told me all the things that, I, that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Then they went out of the city and came to him. <laughs> yes. You think there's power in the testimony? Yes. Hmm. When your testimony exalts Jesus Christ, yes. yeah. and we take all the personal pronouns, all the eyes out of it, yes. and give him all the glory. Yes. Amen? Amen. It'll have an effect. There was a young man. Came back from Vietnam. Joined a motorcycle gang. 
and was involved in an accident. Hurt very badly in the hospital. And a couple of babes in Christ didn't know what to do. They took this guy that belonged to a motorcycle gang, very, very vulgar, very worldly, and took him a bouquet of flowers and a sympathy card. He's still in church today. Don't underestimate what God asks you to do. Oh, that's right. he, he blesses and multiplies yeah. what's done. There's a man, I believe, in our local assembly that a lady barged into his door and knelt down in front of him and began to witness to him. Is that, a, is that a true statement? I believe there's a couple in our assembly that a woman very sick in her body went to their house, inv invited herself, and witnessed to them. Yeah. And I believe they're here tonight because of God. And they overcame how? By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, yes. and they lived not their lives unto the death. Yes. It all wasn't all about this flesh. It was about living a life that was pleasing to God. Yes. Yes. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. <laughs> this is dynamos, not dynamite. Too many believers have dynamite at their disposal. I worked at the Baldwin Powerhouse, did two tours as an apprentice electrician. And that generating facility that generates millions of kilowatts for Ameren consumes a great part of what it generates just to operate it. But a dynamo consumes nothing. It's totally 100% re reproductive. And they were first called Christians at Antioch because of their simple life dedicated to Jesus Christ that they birthed other Christians. Don't ever underestimate your simple testimony. When God wants you to share it, yes. it'll reach the point that it's intended to be. If she can do it, yes. if she can do it, this Samaritan woman, this half-breed, this woman that had failed in human relationships and everybody knew about it. If she can have an encounter with Jesus Christ and simply tell people, he told me everything I ever did. But I want to tell you something. When he tells you yes. everything you ever did, it will be not in a condescending manner. It will be with arms of mercy and arms of grace reaching out to you like you've never experienced. He's still power. He's still God. He's still on the throne. He still wants to forgive men and women of all their sins. He wants to fill us with his power and his spirit and his love, which cannot be separated. And he wants us to do the ministry in this community that needs to be done. If she can do it without the Holy Ghost, without a repentance experience like some of us have and a baptismal experience like some of us had and some of us felt the power of God, if she can do it, yes. how much more can God use us yes. in this community yes. to reach people? Yes. Amen. And they overcame. They were victorious by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they lived not their lives unto the death. Yes, Pastor Michael.
We just clap our hands to the Lord for the word. That, that particular scripture and setting is, there's so much to be said yes. about that particular passage of scripture. I, I've always uh, found it interesting that um, she thought he was talking about water. And uh, one of the things I've felt like God revealed to me some time ago is we seek what we are. Flesh seeks flesh. Yes. You know, 80% of, of our body is made up of water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she thought he was talking about water. But when he's talking to her about worship, he says, they that worship me must worship in spirit and truth because God also seeks what he is. <laughs> and amazing how God can create a path for us to go from the natural to the supernatural and go from what we are to what he wants to become what he wants us to be. Uh, Verse 39 of that scripture, of that chapter says, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that I ever did. (laughs) If she can do it, so can we. If a woman who was ostracized by the Samaritans Samaritans were often called dogs. If you were outside, if you were a Gentile, if you were not a Jew, you were called and referred to as a dog. It was obviously a derogatory term. And this woman, she couldn't even hardly associate with those that were already ostracized. She had to come at a different time of the day. If she can transform and do it, so can we. If she can be the door that opens revival to an entire community, so can we. Thank you, Pastor David. What a powerful, powerful word. I hope that you are challenged, as you should be tonight. If she can do it, so can we. I wonder if you'd stand with us tonight. And I think it would be a a fantastic idea for us just to spend a few moments in prayer, asking God to put us in the right place. Because at the, end of, at the end of our time, at the end of our life, when it's our time to go to meet him, whether it's in the rapture or we just leave this natural world, we want God and those around us to say they are an overcomer. Truly by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, they love not their life even unto death. God was the most important Amen. Ask God tonight, would you, would you ask the Lord tonight, God, I pray that you would help me to understand that there is an opportunity for me to do and be greater than anything that anybody else has rolled out for me. Could we ask the Lord tonight, Lord, help us. Lord, we're so thankful for your word. God, we're thankful for the light that it is to our feet and the lamp that it is to our path. Lord, we're so thankful, Lord. Time and time again, we can come together and find new things and new ways to digest your word. Find new thought, new understanding, encouragement, revelation in your word. Lord, I pray that you would help us tonight with this one specifically. Now, there's so many of us that live our days dismissing who we are what we are because of our past, because of what people have said, this is all you're going to be. And there are a lot of us, Lord, that I believe miss out on doing things in your kingdom and overcoming things in your kingdom or winning battles in and for your kingdom because we don't see. We have the same opportunity that some others do. But if she can do it, so can we. Lord, I pray tonight that you would take the scales off of our eyes. I pray that you would open our understanding and help us to realize it doesn't matter what our past is. It doesn't matter what other people have pointed at us, pointed at us and said that we are. It's all about you and the encounter that we have with you. God, I pray in your name. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice, every person that's attached with this service tonight and ask you, God, I pray in your name you would give us a revelation 
For some of us, it'll be a fresh revelation. It'll be a reminder of what you told us years ago. For, for others, it'll be a new revelation, a new understanding that all of us have a place in your kingdom and that you have a will and a direction and a destiny for all of us. If she can do it, so can we. If she can do it, so can we. If she can be changed, so can we. If she can have a revelation of the word, so can we. If she can reach the lost, so can we. If she can change her disposition and her position in life, Lord, so can we. Encourage somebody in your spirit tonight, right now. I'm not so naive, Lord, as to believe that in a crowd this size, that everybody has it all together and that there's not one person here that's wondering, can I make it? Can I impact somebody's life? Can I make a difference? Can I really be used for the kingdom? Can I really do anything or accomplish anything significant? I'm not so naive as to believe that in a crowd this size, that there's this size that there's not people who have been wondering that about their walk with you. God, I pray in your name, give a revelation. If she can do it, so can we. Trust in you, Lord. We're counting on you to help us. Help our unbelief. Help our faith. Help us to see it. In Jesus' name we pray. I plead your blood upon every heart, upon every mind, upon every soul. Pray for your power to be exercised greatly in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. And I wonder, would you shout amen? And I think it behooves us because I feel the Spirit of the Lord tonight. And we've heard the truth of His Word tonight. It behooves us to enter into His presence just for a moment in praise. All across this building, we need to thank Him for His Word. We need to thank Him for His revelation. Can we do that together right now? Lord, we love You and praise You. God, we give You all the glory and all the honor. Thank You for Your Word. Lord, it is quicker and it is more powerful than any two-edged sword. Lord, I pray in your name. We praise you tonight. I praise you for your word. I praise you, Lord, for how it cuts away things that, 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 that we've never been able to see before. It cuts, cuts things away so that we can see things that we've never seen before. It cuts away things that we don't need. I'm thankful for that. Thank you for the truth and the power of your word. We give you praise and we give you glory. God, we thank you for an opportunity. God, I know that there are people that have been wondering. I know there are people who've been wondering, can I do this? Can I really be that? Can Is this really of God, what He's showing me that I'm going to do and what I'm going to be? God, I, I want you to know how much we appreciate the opportunity that you've given us when other people have said it is not possible. They'll never make it. They'll never be able to do it. You're saying, hang on just a second. Oh, revelation is about to be had, and I'm going to do a work. Oh, I praise you, Lord. I magnify you. Thank you for the opportunity to be used by your kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you feel him? Can you feel him tonight? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One testimony of an outcast woman had five husbands and the one she was with was not her own. Had to go to water, to grab water at the time of the day when no one else was there. It's when she was alive. She's the one that turned the city upside down. If she can do it, so can we. Thank you, Pastor David. Praise the name of the Lord. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Hallelujah. Just very, very quickly, as, as we're closing tonight, i just just go over the announcements one more time. MIT this Saturday, January 23rd. If you're in that second class, starts at 8.30, 8.30 to 10.30. If you've not been a part but you want to start, you want to become a part of that, be here at 8.30. Please let me know. Text me, call me, or let me know after service. Sunday service, January 24th, 10 a.m. Be here or invite somebody to be with you. I also encourage you to share the services. If you've not done that tonight, when you get out of here tonight, just go to your Facebook and, and use that share button and let people see that on your on your timeline. January 30th, Holy Ghost Fire Grill reopens 
with pancakes and prayers, 1030 a.m. to 1, 1 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Please invite somebody to be with you. And then church-wide home Bible study will begin in February. Have more de- details on that uh, this Sunday. We love you all and appreciate you. Facebook, until we see you again, God bless. Would you greet one another in the name of the Lord? God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.